What is the meaning of life? That's the subject we've been discussing now for, I think, about 188 broadcasts this year. And we're trying to deal with it from the point of view of our own normal personal experiences. And what we have been saying recently, after discussing what the origin of the world was and uh, how it was made and what we think the maker had in mind when he made us, after discussing those subjects, and by all means, if you want to examine the intellectual undergirdings of our discussion, please do send for those early cassettes. But what we've been discussing now, particularly during these past few weeks, is the dreadful feeling so many of us have that we have become machines ourselves. We are surrounded by machines. We're meeting automated gas or petrol pumps now at the service stations. We so often go up and pay uh, our money through a glass window to uh, someone that seems almost an automaton at times to us in the service station. We get our money from not uh, personal tellers, but from machines uh, built into the walls of our banks. We often phone our friends and receive uh, answering machines speaking to us, telling us where they are. And all in all, we find ourselves dealing as often with machines as we do with people. And many of us feel that we also have become machines because it seems that we ourselves have been programmed. We've been programmed to please people from we pleased our first junior infant teacher to the last time we responded to our boss's smile or were all worried and went home depressed after he had frowned at us. We find ourselves behaving so often like machines as far as our jobs are concerned. We discover that we do them almost as a robot would, with not terribly much interest in the job, and we do it primarily just to get our little pay packet at the end of the week or the month so that we can exchange it for something that will go in our tummies, and then we hope that we might exchange it for something that will give us a little happiness. And so we have realized that Many of us live like machines, and we have reached the point where, for us, the problem is not to research into the problem of outer space, but rather research into the problem of inner space. And we so often look inside to see, is there anybody there at all? Where did we go, the us that used to be? Uh, where am I? Uh, where was the fresh little personality that uh, used to think of all kinds of happy hopes and thoughts when it was five or six or seven years of age? And we wonder longingly, now where is that person? What uh, we have been saying is that many of us find that there seems nobody there. We uh, introspect a little, look inside, to try to find out if there is any person there, and we begin to come up with the conclusion there is nobody there. And then we realize with horror, and horror probably is an understatement, we realize with terror that we cannot find ourselves, that the question, I do not who know who I am, is no longer a simple question for us. We actually don't know who we are any longer. We can't tell what we really do want to do with our lives or what we really think. And we begin to see that we have died inside. There's something has died inside us, something that was good. It's as if Wordsworth's a line of poetry has a pathetic meaning for us especially. He said, you remember, and there hath passed a glory from the earth. And it seems as if in our own lives so often there hath passed a glory from the earth. Some of the fresh spontaneity that used to be me has disappeared. 
And uh, what we have been saying is that there was a remarkable man that lived in the first century of our era and uh, was different from all the other so-called religious leaders in that they all died like us and were buried and that was the end of them. But this man died and was buried and then came back to life again and lived here on the earth for more than a month, proving to everyone that knew him and many that didn't that he was able to overcome death and that he was actually the son of the maker of our world. And that man was the man that we know as Jesus. And he actually said this. He said, you know, if you live depending on the world of people and of places and things and circumstances for your security and your significance and your happiness, you'll eventually die inside. You'll just die. And he knew we would. He knew that you can't keep on depending on the bank or the company for the security that you need, your financial security and your material security, without, as that old song goes, uh, losing your soul to the company store. Eventually, you become utterly dependent and a slave to the thing or the person that seems to be able to provide you with the money that will give you the security or the food and the shelter and clothing that you need to stay alive. And that's what happens to us. We die inside and we become just robots that are stimulated and motivated by the powers that provide us with security. It's the same with our desire for significance or self-worth or self-esteem. We start off thinking that we're simply using our friends to establish our prowess or our prestige by our cleverness, <clears throat> but we end up depending on their opinions of us and depending on their approval, and we become slaves that do whatever will gain their approval, whatever will get a smile from them will produce the right joke from us. Whatever will please them, we will do. And so we die inside. We cease to be ourselves. We lose the sense of what we ourselves are. And this man, Jesus, said, that will happen to you. And there'll come a time when the only answer will be if somehow that can be recreated inside you, what you used to be when you were a child, what you used to be when you were young, that spontaneous you, that will have to be recreated in you. And no psychologist can recreate that. No one can recreate that because that is your spirit that has died. That's the real you. When we talk about the spirit of Churchill, we talk about the very essence of the man. When we talk about your spirit, we're talking about your real essence, the thing that makes me me and makes you you. And that's what has died. And that's what has to be recreated. And uh, Jesus said that you'd actually have to be born all over again. And the man he was talking to, it's recorded in one of the books of the New Testament called John in chapter 3. The man he, whom he, to whom he was speaking was a scholar. And he said, you mean I have to be enter into my mother's womb all over again and be born? And Jesus said, no, no. You have to be born from above. You have to be born from above by the Spirit. Uh, my father's spirit, who is the maker of the world, he has to put that spirit into your spirit again and make you alive again. And, of course, this man, whose name was Nicodemus, could not believe it. And he said, you mean that can happen? And Jesus said, yes, it can. And it actually can happen. What we have done is we've made it so religious that we think it's a spooky thing. But actually, you can start all over again. You can be changed inside, and there is only one who can do it, and that is the maker who originally made you. Let's talk a little further about how you can actually experience that uh, once and for all in your life. Let's talk about that tomorrow.